countries in the world don't have asphalt roads like we do? I mean, I went to Texas and back and was not life-threatening. But there's, there's whole countries that only have maybe 10%, and that's usually in the cities. But from the cities to other places, it's dirt, and it's mud, and it's dangerous to get these. And I've watched, been watching this thing, and I just, because it's not special effects, it's real. And it's humbling. You know, when you watch something, it should have an effect on you. Or else you're watching the wrong thing. If you're watching the wrong stuff, it'll have an effect on you too. It'll quench your spirit. But it, there's things we need to be aware of that other people in the world don't have it near as good as we do. And I've never, I've never thanked God for asphalt. But I have this week. And I'm just little things like that, if we, we don't even think for, take for granted. We take, won't think about it. Plumbing. Sanitation. I mean, things that we think are just owed to us. Hallelujah. So, just anyway, FYI. Come on, guys. Let's, let's stick up the offering. He's so good. It's good to have you all back. You were missed. Good to, uh, I'm going to acknowledge Sharon Thunder, wherever you are. I know she said she wasn't going to be here today, but she was going to be listening. So, she just heard her name. She's all probably going, hey, call my name out. <laughs> Um, hallelujah. While we're taking up the offering, um, just want to let y'all know, just in case some of y'all don't, um, Brother Al has gone to be with Jesus. He, he went to bed Friday night and woke up su- uh, Saturday morning in heaven. Isn't that the way you want to go? Hallelujah. And uh, some of y'all didn't even know he was sick. But uh, he's an old friend. He's been in, I've known him 27 years. And, uh, that was a hard one. So that's all I'm going to say because I'll lose it if I continue to talk. So just no. Uh, Bible says precious are, the, precious are the death of his saints. And that word precious means valuable because we lost the labor. That man was fighting to the end, doing and serving he, he moved away for a few years. He came, he, I believe the Lord brought him home to take him home. He came back, was in the church he loved, was around the people he loved. But when he walked through those doors back in June, he, came to, he told Kevin, what can I do? And he's a server. And uh, you that are laborers and servers, you know, he is, that is precious because there's not, uh, last I read, there's few of us. So... But this message today will inspire you to become one. All right. So if you want to go to Sunday school, go today. Hallelujah. Has anybody got a cough drop? Hmm. Somebody... Rem- thinks about it. Uh, oh, that's a, that's a good one. Ooh, yeah. Good. <laughs> uh, leave those in my office. No, I'm serious. Leave them in my office. She has more. Okay. That's usually something I keep in my office because um, sometimes um, my throat gets a little dry. So I try to keep it lubricated while I minister. Um, I'd like to let you know that uh, we have a new Mrs. Jones in the house. Yeah. Yeah. Justin and Marlene got married yesterday. That was a joyous occasion. So, uh, me and Mrs. Mrs. Jones. <laughs> so, uh, there's quite a few Joneses in this house. Uh, all right, so I want to, I feel like I've been out of, out of the pulpit for about a month. I, was, I have. I've not been here for a while, but I'm so looking forward to being here today. 
Um, I think I have a word in season. You know, that's really important that we have a word in season. Because if it's in season, it says it will comfort the weary. And uh, there's been a lot going on. I went to Hawaii, got a shirt from Hawaii. Um, I didn't listen to the news for that whole week, which was wonderful. Um, but um, I haven't listened a whole lot since I've been back because uh, I've had some other things I've had to take care of, whatever and stuff. But um, what little I have, because when I say news, I'm not talking about uh, CB, CB, uh, CNN, ABC. I don't ever watch that anyways. Um, but this is not about politics today. This is a word in season to encourage you. Because there's things that look like people, it looks like people can lie and steal and just flat out do wrong. And it seems that they don't get caught, that it doesn't catch up with them, that they can, you know, they continue to do things. And it's proven that they're doing these things and people just seem to look the other way and not care. You know, the Bible says, and I had a revelation on this the other day, you know, we always take scripture and we try to find it where it fits. It's like puzzle pieces. But the problem with that is sometimes we put those pieces in the wrong places. And the Bible says in the last days they'll, there'll be people that will, look, that will look for teachers that will tell them what they want to hear. They have itching ears and they'll want to be told. I mean, I've always thought that was people in church just going to churches where you hear things that you want to hear. That does apply there. But you know there's people that watch certain news, news stations because it's telling them what they want to hear. See, it has a secular meaning too. This doesn't have just one meaning. And there are people that want to believe certain things even though it's contrary to the truth. It's because we're living in the last days. And this word should hopefully have an eternal purpose in your life today to hear that an eternal purpose not a temporal not a just for, just till the elections we figure out what's going to happen it's probably going to go to the supreme court and it's going to be decided but regardless of what happens see my faith is not in what happens and who ends up in the white house because god's bigger than whoever is in there okay It's on his shoulders. Yeah, so he's going he's gonna to take care of it. Amen? But, now we've all, a lot of us have already done all we can do. We've we voted. We've prayed. We're, some of us have continued to pray. Okay, so, but when all's said and done, we still have to be about our Father's business. Okay? All right. Okie dokie. All right. This message is called Approved by God. Uh, I'm in my, on my uh, calendar, I wrote Approved to God. Here I wrote Approved of God. It, whichever one applies. Whichever one applies. Um, here's a familiar scripture. It's a New King James Version. It says, Be, 2 Timothy 2.15. Be diligent to present yourself approved to God. A worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Um, the King James says, Study to show yourself approved unto God, unto God a workman that uh, needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Well, my question is, well, there's different words we want to look at as we look at that scripture. Diligent. I mean, when anything you do diligently, there's effort involved. I mean, when you drive, you should drive with diligence. We appreciate it when you do. Um, when you work, you should do it diligently. Not half-heartedly. Not, uh, you know. Uh, so there's work involved in this. Be diligent to present yourself approved to God. Now listen to this. God loves everybody. You know God loved you when you were a sinner? His love for you did not change because you got saved. He loved you 
even when you were lost, he loved you. But then when you got when you got born again and you became his child, now he's obligated. Responsible. Abba, Father. I'm a dad. I raised seven kids. I got a bunch of grandkids. Um, but I'm not obligated to all the people on my street that have grandkids and all their kids. I'm obligated to the ones that I that are mine. That, that look look for my face when they say dad. Um, but God, this is not about the love of God. This is about God approving. He can love you. How many of us fathers in this house and mothers? We, we can love our children, but not always be approving of what they're doing and how they're acting and their character or sometimes the lack thereof. Okay? Catch, stay with me now. This is Yes, there's a difference between God loving you and approving of you. Right. See, this is where everybody goes, God loves everybody, da, 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 and tries to melt it all down and act like whatever you, do, whatever you do doesn't matter. It does. God is not mocked. Whatever, whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. You know, there's teaching in the church right now. You know, one of the things Jesus said in Matthew 24 over and over and over again he says, do not be deceived. There's more deception going on right now in, in the world and in the church than there ever has in the, in the history of man. Okay. Um, he says, don't be deceived. There's a teaching going on right now of this hyper grace that, that Jesus died for your past, present, and future sins. So, my, so no matter what, it, what you do, it's already taken care of. And you don't even have to repent because it's already under the blood. That's, a, that's, that's being taught in a lot of churches right now, and it's not true. Jesus said, you have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And when you sin, he says, if you sin. How many of y'all have sinned since you got saved? Some of y'all might have before you got here. If you're not careful, you might do it before this message is over. You know, you can, you can sin sitting here in the house of God by an attitude. <laughs> Whatever. Oh, not another message on workers. See, that's, 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 that's being belligerent in his house. It's being disrespectful. Good news is we don't have those kind of people here anymore. We used to. I used to sit out there and look at people roll their eyes at me. I'm not making this up. Some of them would sit out there and read their Bibles just to let me know, I'm not listening to you. I'm reading my Bible. And it's like, you're being rebellious. Because when I stand up here and preach, it's not my call talking to you. It's Jesus speaking through us. If I've heard from God, this is, I'm a messenger and I'm giving you what God wants to say to the house. And if you, oh, that's just Brother Mike. I, and you just always pick and choose when it's me and when it's God. You know, I have to give an account from God. When it's me, I will give an account for that, not you. You're not the one that's supposed to sit there and judge every little thing, and I didn't like that. I'm going to talk to the board about that. Good luck, we don't have one. We're going we're gonna to work about getting you voted out of here. Now, that, that goes on in lots of churches, but it don't go on here because we we're not set up that way. Woe to those poor pastors that have to sit under that scrutiny of, usually unspiritual people trying to trying to govern a spiritual house and they're not even spiritual men. That's foolishness. That stuff don't fly in this house. That's why I can share with you the truth and not be fearful of losing my job because I'm not you didn't hire me. God placed me here and I've had people for thirty five years try to remove me, but here I am. Still here. So be diligent to present yourself approved to God, a workman that does not need to be ashamed. Why would you ever feel like you're ashamed? Where's this, a workman would be ashamed. Where's this shame going to take place? Well, just hang on here. In a month from now, we're going to play a video for you called The Beam of Judgment. And that's where, that's where on the, on, when you get to heaven and you're at the judgment seat of Christ, 
You're not, you're not going to be judged for sin. If you're there, that's all under the blood. But how many know you could be ashamed in that moment because of the stewardship of what you've heard and the truth you know and what you did or did not do with it? You'll stand there and, and go, gosh, this is real. And when you're having those woulda, coulda, shoulda moments, there's shame coming with that. Guess what? Jesus is going to wipe that away. I wish I hadn't played video games for 10 hours a day. Yeah, I wish you hadn't either. I wish I, would, I wish I would have talked to my neighbors, my friends, my children. You know, this is, a, this is a sad thing. You know, when Al passed away, we all knew Baba Shakai. We knew that he was in the presence of the Lord. When I walked in that room Saturday morning and saw my friend laying there, that's a shell. I knew he was in the presence of the Lord. See, I knew. Some of you went, well, you, nobody really knows. To, no, no, you better know before, you, before breath leaves you. The Bible says we can know beyond a shadow of a doubt that we are sons and daughters of the Most High. And, and you're known by those that know you. See, I know he's in the presence of the Lord. You ever heard somebody say when someone passed away, I, th I think he knew the Lord. I heard, I heard his parents say I. He made a decision when he was a child. Man, I don't want that ever spoke of me. I'm going out in flames, buddy. Hallelujah. Got guns bla blazing. Ain't going to be no doubt. At my funeral, they're going to celebrate because they know I'm dancing in the presence of my king. They're going to say, he ran a good race and he ran it to the end. He didn't quit. He was faithful. You know, when you hear the word faithful, you think of all kind of words like dependable, reliable. Uh, I get, there's a list of them. But one word you don't think of, and it actually bears out that this is true about, being, about faithful people, is multiplication. Because when you're faithful, you will multiply what God's giving you. Remember this? Jesus told a parable of these guys, the tares he gave, or the talents. He gave this guy three, gave this guy two, gave this guy one. And the faithful multiplied what was given to him. The unfaithful and fearful hid it. They didn't reproduce. My buddy Al reproduced. When he got filled with the Holy Ghost, guess what? He prayed some of his co-workers through the Holy Ghost. When he got delivered, he took some of his buddies through he took some people through deliverance, cast demons out of some folks. When he got saved, he told people about salvation. Everything God gave him, he reproduced in somebody else in his life. When he learned the, the, the Marismos and learned how to, the difference between his soul and spirit, that boy, that boy got it. He lived it. I've seen things hit him that would make most people freak out and get mad and lose it. And him, him just say, no, nah, that's my soul. Hang on. And he'd get that boy subdued, and all right, I'm okay now. It was amazing. See, this wasn't just sermons and words he heard. They became life. We live and move and have our being in him. This book should never just be about words. The Bible says, be doers of the word, not hearers only. I've seen people sit out there and hear and hear and hear and never change. You know what? They're not here today. I've seen some that sit there and, and, and I told people, if you don't get your soul under control, it will take you out. And that did. Took them out. Your biggest enemy you got to worry about is you. You got to go and look in that mirror on a regular basis and say, now don't you get, I ain't listening to you. You ain't taking me out of this race. You're not going to get me distracted on temporal things that don't matter and miss the eternal purpose. You have to tell yourself stuff like that. That person, they did wrong by me. They mistreated me. They lied about me. But I'm, I'm going to keep my heart right because I'm not going to let that affect me because that will take me out of the race. That's right. That's right. What if Joseph had gotten mad? What if Joseph had said, this ain't fair. I didn't do nothing. I didn't touch that woman, Potiphar's wife. She came after me. 
And I'm in jail because she lied. He had to forgive her, didn't he? And the baker and the candlestick maker and all the other people. <laughs> hey, when I when I when I when I get up to when I get out of here, I'm gonna tell the king about you. I'm not gonna leave you down here. That didn't happen. People have made promises and told us things and said stuff and it's come and gone. But you have to keep your heart right because when God needed when the king needed something interpreted, he needed a dream. It didn't make sense all some fat cows get swallowed up by skinny cows. And he said, I don't get this. And none of the people knew the interpretation of the dream but one. And God gave it to that man. You know, if that man was bitter and angry and resentful and down there making marks on the wall and just, you know, counting down the days when I get out of here, I'm going to go, I'm going to toilet paper Potiphar's house like there ain't no... <laughs> I mean, if he had sat around and just tried to look for ways, I mean, that's, that's human nature. Aren't you glad that we've been given divine nature? Peter says we've been given divine nature. You don't have to run around with that old cranky thing you got called self. You can, get, you can deal with self, and self can get saved. Not just your spirit, your soul can get saved. Receive with meekness and grafted word, which is able to save your soul. Where that internal tug of war is over, and now you know when you're thinking weird stuff, and you go, nah, that's not me. Shut up. And he tells you, who are you talking to? I was talking to myself. My soul was trying to get me off on some little tangent. My mind was just going places where I didn't want it to go. Hey, get back over here. Like a three-year-old. Just try to slip out of there. But you know, there comes a day when you got that boy dealt with, and he now just stands there because you told him to. And he hears stuff, and he doesn't react. He sits there to wait to, to wait till your spirit man tells him how to, how to respond. Woo, this is anointed. How to respond, not react. We lived a reactionary life long enough it's time to be it's time for the sons and daughters of the most high to stand up and realize who we are in Christ that we are born again not of corruptible seed but incorruptible seed mm -mm -mm. but why is this I wrote here why should we, we be ashamed at the judgment seat well glad you ask number one you weren't workers oh <gasps> What's even in the scripture? Be diligent to present yourself and prove to God a worker. You know, every, not everybody that's born again is a worker. There's a lot of people that attend church and go home and live their life the same old, same old. I'm taking that this quietness is a conviction upon the hearts of us. Not heard that, been there, done that, don't care. This is why there's people going to be ashamed one day because, number one, we're all called to work. See, one of the first things I acknowledged about my brother Al was he served for 27 years. From the time he got born again, that boy, he hit, he hit it running. He did, and he served. He's been the church treasurer. He's done deacon. He's done all kinds of stuff. When his body wasn't he able to do some of the heavy lifting and stuff, he found something else to do. We, we'll find things for your season in life. You young guys, we got jobs. We got work. We got things laid up for you to do. Some go, I don't, I'm not that spiritual. I don't know that much right now. Can you drive a car? Yeah, I can drive. Well, we got people that have hospital appointments and things where they need rides back and forth. Well, I could do that. Well, there you go. You're serving. Could you go sit with somebody that's on hospice and their time of departure is at hand? Could you sit there and read them the word because their eyes have failed them? Could you go to an old folks home and just sit there and talk to some of the ladies and men there and just tell them, you know, God didn't forget about you. There's th plenty, there are so many things to do, it's not funny. 
we got stuff around here to do. we got the same handful of people been doing the same things for decades, and we're not ready for the harvest because if we don't get some more labors, it ain't going to happen. Huh? Yeah. He ain't going to send them here if we don't have moms and dads that will watch those babies. You know, if you have a lot of kids and, you, you know, you know the, the, the divorce runs really high after triplets. It seems like most men can handle three. That's the max. But this is not, you go look it up. I'm not making this up. But when you have four babies or five babies, the men bail. Forget if it's past that. But when they have more than three, that's it. They don't have any more grace for three. Because, you know, when you have three babies nursing at the same time, you've got to have some help. And see, some dads just think, that's not, I did my part. You know, this, that's woman's work and all that kind of stupid stuff. So all of a sudden they have more, they have three or four kids, and now dads are like, I'm out here, I didn't sign up for this. You know, you're going to stand before God one day and give an account of the stewardship of your own children. Forget about the lost and all that. He's, you're going to have to give a stewardship a account to God of how you did or did not raise your children in the things of God. The Bible commands us, train up a child in the way that he should go. It didn't say go read every book at no Barnes & Noble on how to raise a child. He said train up a child. The good news is he gave us a training manual. He told us how to do it. Yeah, but I didn't like I, I read it. I didn't like that. I, I found that so-and-so had a better book. Is, oh, you, there's better than the Bible? I, don't, I haven't read that book. There are a lot of books that have come and gone. and people. You know, there's people, there's a deception in the, house, in the body of Christ right now thinking this thing's outdated. You know, this thing is more, in, more in tune and more in season today than the day it, was, it came out of the mouth of God. Because there's a lot of prophecy, and guess what? It's all coming to pass right in front of us. We're not saying... One of these days, this will come to pass. We're, we're saying what the prophet Joel said would happen in the last days. It shall come to pass in the last days. Peter walks out on the day of Pentecost and says, This is that. That was a fulfillment. This is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. Today, God has poured out his spirit, which you now see and hear. It came to pass that day. So when did the last day start? Are we in the last days? It started on the day of Pentecost. So yeah, for 2,000 years, we've been in the last days. Well, where are we at right now? We're in the last of 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 the last day. We're at the very end. And we got people in the church going, I don't know if we're in the last days or not. We've only been in it for 2,000 years. Where have you been? Why would you be ashamed? You weren't a worker. Number two, you work, but you had the wrong attitude. You know, you don't, get, you don't get a blessing unless you do it right. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. There's a way Jesus wants you to do things. You know, there's a lot of people out there calling themselves Christian, but not everybody's representing Jesus right. How many of y'all know Jesus don't cuss? Well, if he, if he stubbed his toe, I think he would. No, you, you would. But the Bible says he never sinned. He never, that means he never cussed. Well, God knows my heart. I only, I only, I only do it every once in a while. You got to work on that. Because the time, one day you're going to fly off and say a bunch of stuff, and there's going to be people standing around that you've been witnessing to, and in that one moment you're going to undo months, if not years, of things that you told them. You know Jesus gets judged all the time because of us. You ever notice the people that are the boldest sometimes are the weirdest? Seriously, I've been a Christian for 30, uh, 47 years, and I've noticed that sometimes the, the more bold people are, not everybody that's bold, but you ever met those weirdos? I mean, they walk around, they're robotic, you know, the four spiritual laws. I mean, they don't, they're not embarrassed to go up and talk to somebody, whatever, they, because they're just... It's about them, not about Jesus. They're looking for a notch on their belt. They want to pray the sinner's prayer with somebody so they can say, I was at the mall and I led five people to the Lord. Okay, where are those babies? 
Can you imagine a mother saying, ah, I gave birth to three triplets this weekend. Well, where are your children? I left them at the hospital. I did my part. I birthed them. Do you realize birthing a child is just the beginning? There's a whole lot more. And I, granted, ladies, there's a lot of suffering in that. But, you know, it's not over just because you pushed them out and there they are. And cords cut and cleaned up and here they are. We've only just begun. And people, yeah, when they're 18, they're no longer my problem. I ain't seen that in the scripture yet. All right, so in 1 Corinthians 10.10, 10, it says not to murmur and complain when you do things, because if you do, you'll be destroyed by the destroyer. You know when you're, you know sometimes Christians are cheerleading for the devil and don't even know it. Can you imagine if you had little pom-poms out there, go devil, go devil. Some of you go, I would never do that. Well, if you're cleaning the church bathroom and you're sitting there going, I'm better than this. I don't need to be doing this. I, I got better things to do. Why don't we get these new people out here cleaning the toilet? I've done it for years. I tell you, you realize that none of that. I hope somebody buys you a milkshake or something because you ain't getting a squat from God. He don't bless that kind of attitude. I'll tell you what, I'll tell you. All the way no. Nobody acknowledged, Brother Mike never gets up and tells everybody that I'm the deacon of the month or whatever, never calls my name out. I got news for you. If you do it with the right attitude, there's a special book written and your name's in it. I want to tell you something, Body of Christ. It's not enough to just get your name in the Lamb's Book of Life. That's not that hard to do. Getting saved is not that hard. Being lost and being found. Woohoo! Being dead, made alive. Come on, what, what part of this going, yeah, it was really a choice. I didn't know if I wanted to stay dead or actually become alive. <laughs> And you had the quick and made alive who once were dead in trespasses and sin. You know, choosing life, that wasn't a heart. God even tells you in the Old Testament, he says, I put before you blessing and cursing, life and death. And then he gives you the answer to the quiz. Choose life. If you don't, if you don't make the right choice, what's wrong with you? Choose life. Blessing and cursing. Which one do you want? Do you want to be cursed or blessed? Ooh, that's a toughie. Because ah. I see a lot of people that are cursed, but they look like they're being blessed. You ever seen people that are, you know, drug dealers, most of them drive nice cars. It's not, it's not how much money you make, it's how you make it. You know, you can make money and, and do it by illegal means or ill-gotten means. See, the blessing of the Lord make rich and add no sorrow. If you're, being made, if you're being made rich, but you're hurting and tearing down and destroying other people's lives in the process, that's not from the Lord. I've climbed the corporate ladder and I st not just stepped on, I stomped people. I knocked them to the bottom and I'm on the top, therefore I win. And then you die and you, and you go to hell. And nobody knows you, nobody sees you, you're tormented for eternity. That's not a winner. None. We don't talk about hell. We, I didn't come to hear about that. You know, I, don't re I rarely talk about hell. You know why? Because it's not on my list. It ain't on my bucket list. I, I, I've, I've avoided hell altogether by accepting Jesus. So I don't think about it. But it's real. And I don't serve God to avoid hell. I serve God because I love Jesus. And if you're serving God to avoid hell, you need a, a closer encounter with the Lord because it's still about you. You're still trying to save your bacon. And it's not about you. I serve Jesus because he so loved me, he died for me. And I could live for him if he could die for me. All right, number three. They believe the lie. What's the lie? It's not for today. It's not for, you know, some of y'all are sitting in this room because you actually read the Bible for yourself. You didn't just sit and listen to the preacher. When the preacher says, it's not for today, that went out with the apostles. You know, miracles and signs and wonders, God don't do that anymore because we have hospitals and x-ray machines and all kinds of technology. Uh, and I thank God for all that. But you know what? He does do stuff like that. He does heal. He does deliver. He does cast, de demons still get out of people. Yeah. There's a whole denomination, several of them actually, 
that says Christians can't have demons. Yes, they can. 90% of the people I pray for are Christians struggling why they're in this inter internal tug of war when Paul says, the good that I want to do, I don't always do, and that which I don't want to do, I end up doing. What is it? He says, it's sin in me, strife. It's demonic. You know, it's wonderful when the Lord just says, you want those out? Yes. Can I stop the bus and take the cheerleaders off? That would be awesome. I've seen God make such change in people's lives through one simple act of obedience. Guess what? The demons got in when you were before you met Jesus. They didn't come in after. And they're in your soul, not your spirit. And there's people living... I, you know, I, met, I, I watch things with, with eternal glasses. When I'm watching TV, I was watching something with Brynn the other day, and I, all I could think about is, boy, that guy, needs, that guy needs deliverance. This guy had gone to war, and one of his buddies died, and he's been beaten up with that thing over and over, and it's messing him up. And, and I'm thinking, dude, you just need deliverance. You got demonic spirits. It's not, you know, that's called uh, dramatic post-stress syndrome, whatever. Yeah, but you know, when you have a trauma, that can let that thing, uh, something in, and it doesn't go away until somebody casts that out. Well, they need medication and stuff. None of us want to go through life numb. No one wants to be medicated. I want to be free. I want my mind working with me. I don't want to have to numb my body. You know, you can numb the body and soul still talking. You can't, you can't medicate demons. But they believe the lie. Some of y'all used to go to churches that told you that the Holy Spirit wasn't for today. Guess what it is? He is for today. He does convict, reprove. Aren't you, isn't he a blessing? Kevin said it before I got up here. He said, we don't have to do this in our own strength. The Holy Spirit leads us, guides us, comforts us. Oh, my goodness. And he has power. He has power. And guess what? He gives it to those. That, you know, why would God give you tools if you just keep them in a toolbox and, and, go, and every once in a while open up a toolbox to show everybody how many cool tools you got? See, that's the world. I know guys that have garages with shelves and tools. They got every tool you can think of. Guess what? They couldn't fix nothing. You know what? It just, it's just a cool thing. When you have money, sometimes you've got to find things to do with it. So you get all the name brands, all the special tools. Yeah, I got one of those. Yeah, I got one of those. Yeah. I got three of those. You ever fix a guy's car? You ever go and help people? You ever go do anything with those tools to help other people? No, I just got them. Now, see, we, we say that out loud and make a natural picture, and we go, that's stupid. Well, why would God give us tools if we're not going to use to help and fix people? Why would God give you a deliverance ministry if you don't want to pray for people? If you don't like people, guess what? Your toolbox is going to stay pretty, pretty bone dry. You don't even have to pray for tools. If you, got, you get out and, and want to help and fix people, God will give you every tool. I didn't, I didn't necessarily pray for certain tools. They just came into my life because I needed them. When you love people and want to see broken people fixed, and there's tons of them out there, God will give you every tool you need. Words of knowledge will come. Gifts of healing. All kinds of things will come when you, need the, when you love people. Love. So number three, they believe the lie. It's not for today. It is for today. Some of y'all couldn't stand sitting in church and kept telling you that you're not qualified. You're, you know, it's amazing how many, you're divorced, and you're out of the race. Really? Yeah. I was in a denomination that said I could only have a Christian worker permit. Doesn't that, doesn't that sound funny to you? A Christian worker permit. We'll permit you to work with Christians, but being a pastor or having any kind of authority or doing anything, no, we can't trust you with that because somebody left you. You know that divorce is not always mutual? Some people just get up and leave. That's not going to make a brother or sister bound by that. And some people are in relationships that are abusive and, and harmful and, and evil. God has called us to peace. We don't have to stay in that kind of stuff. I heard a woman on Christian TV one time talking about 
how she was being beat by her husband and she said, but I stayed with them for the glory of God. I was giving that God glory. Yeah, I got two black eyes for Jesus last week. Thank you, Jesus. See, when you say things, especially on TV, you're, you're, people are so, so insensitive and so not understanding that you have to give an account for every word that comes out of your mouth. And when you're posting something on, when I see these people that got all these huge followings, it's like, oof, man, do you understand how much trouble you can get in if you post the wrong thing? 16 million people liked it. And God's like, I didn't like it at all. Ooh, you're in trouble. All right, let's move on. Let's get approved. I just saved. Approved. Where God goes, all right. How many of y'all want the thumbs up? Number, Roman numeral two or my second point. Guess what? Jesus was approved. He was, yeah. I got scripture to tell you he was. In Acts chapter 2, verse 22, Paul, uh, on the day of Pentecost, Peter stands up and says, Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you, by miracles and signs and wonders, which God did by him in the midst of you, as you yourselves also know. How do we know God approved of Jesus? Because signs and wonders. I mean, you know, Jesus couldn't heal anybody except the Spirit of God worked through him. Jesus said, I don't do anything except the Father tells me. He didn't just walk around healing people. You know, he went to this gate beautiful many times, and there was a cripple there, the Bible says, from his youth. That means Jesus had to walk by there several times and never healed him. But you know, when Peter got filled with the Holy Ghost, he walked by one day and that man said, spare change. And Peter said, I don't have any spare change. But what I do have, I can give you. In the name of Jesus, get up and walk. And he reached down and he pulled him up. And the Bible says his legs received strength. What does that mean? That means these little bony things skinny legs that had never been walked on all of a sudden filled out and they were they weren't just little pencils holding up this body soup god supernaturally healed and restored that means muscle tissue all kinds of stuff ligaments everything they were there they were just atrophy they were just you know if you get a broke arm when you take the cast off one arm's bigger than the other because if you don't use it, you lose it. This guy had never used it. And he received strength. And the Bible says he got up and started jumping up and down and leaping and shouting and praising God. And people got offended because he got healed on the Sabbath. How I many of y'all don't like religious people? I, I'm sorry. God's still working on that in me. You know, the Bible says religious people can get in a lot of trouble. It says the wrath of God is revealed from heaven from against all those who hold the truth in unrighteousness. You ever wonder why sinners don't always sometimes do stupid things and it seems like they, they get a pass? And then sometimes other people do the same thing and boom, shaka, it's coming down on them. Why? Because when you know he that knows to do right and don't do it to him, it's sin. You know, some people just don't know. The people that can get in the most trouble that sit in there, sit in these benches or these chairs out here and hear it week after week after week and don't do anything with it, you're holding the truth in unrighteousness. The Bible says it had been better if they had never known the ways of God than to turn from them. Well, you know, we're unsaved, always saved. It don't matter what happens. I, it's, I'm my ticket punch. I'm going to heaven regardless of, what, regardless of what I do. I mean, that's a lie. Why did you, if, if that was the case, then why did Jesus keep saying, he that endures to the end? The same shall be saved. Go and sin no more. Uh, well, I got my ticket punched and, and there's nothing I do. Nobody can pluck him out of my hand. He, I am stuck in there with whether I like it or not. Does that even sound like something in a relationship you would want to be in? I never threaten Bren. You're stuck with me whether you like it or not. <laughs> I don't have to buy you squat. You know, the whole time I was in Hawaii, I kept trying to find ways to bless her. Because that's what love does. Not, you better be glad I brought you. 
Oh my goodness. Help us, Lord. Here's another scripture, Acts chapter 10, verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about, here's the word, doing. I know that's ongoing. Not, not who went about and did. He's, he kept on doing. What was he doing? Good. You don't have to be healing and raise, casting out demons and raising the dead to be about your father's business. Jesus went about doing good. You know, good's not hard to find to do for people. There's a lot of people that's having a lot of bad things happen in their life. You know what? It would be nice to do something good for them. I want to tell you something. Something so insignificant as opening the door at the post office for somebody that looks elderly or somebody that's got a bunch of packages. I'm telling you, every time I go to the post office, I'm on a man with a mission. If I, I go out, I'm looking out the door before I even get there to see if there's somebody that needs help. Because that's how I live. When I'm walking up to the door, I'm making sure, and I do it all the time. I'll open up the one door and then open up the do other one. I stand off between the two, and as some lady's walking through whatever, she'll go, well, thank you, sir. And I'll say, queen for the day. I'd something. <laughs> and sometimes they say, chivalry's not dead. I said, no, no, it's not. And sometimes they don't say anything. Then I trip them and slam the door on them. <laughs> I don't, I don't do that. Just seeing if y'all are paying attention. You know, you do things, but you're not looking for approval. You're not looking for something. I do things for people all the time that I never, some, a lot of times don't get any recognition for. But we don't do it for recognition. Jesus said, whatever you do in secret, it's going to be shouted from the rooftop. There's a payday coming. And God keeps good books. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, and with power, who went about doing good, healing, healing all who were oppressed. You can throw a rock in any direction and hit at least four or five oppressed people. How I many of 2020, if you weren't oppressed in 2019, when 2020 came, then when now we're at the 11th month, in a couple days we'll be into the 12th month of 2020, did anybody do this last 11 months get tempted to be a little bit oppressed, depressed? Well, I'm sure you did. It's just a trick question. If we, if we say yes, does that mean we're out? In, I'm just asking for honesty, people. Right. You know God likes honesty? You know what God says about David? He says, man after my own heart. You ever read in the Psalms where David, you're my buckler and my shield. A thousand shall fall at my side. Ten thousand my right hand. And then you flip the page. My God, they, where are you? They seek to gnash me well their, with, me, with their teeth. I'm, you know, what? This page, you're, you're more than enough. You're a warrior. The next page, you're freaking out, hiding in the cave, going... Bleep, 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 bleep. That's my interpretation. But you know what God said about David? He said, I love this guy. Because David was honest. You know, God wants honesty. The Bible says he seeks. God is the spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. You know, it's okay to come to church when you're having a bad day, when you had a bad week, when you're heavy, when you're feeling overcome. Not overcoming, overcomer. You feel like this, this, every day this week, just feel like you kept getting knocked down. Every time you get up, you got knocked down. And there's a voice that says, why don't you stay home today? What, 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 what does it matter if you go? You're just going to feel worse because you've just messed up all week long. That's the day you get up and you put your pants on or you put your dress on, ladies, whatever, up or down, however it's going to happen. And you say, this is the day I need to go to the house of God. I need to be in his presence because in his presence is fullness of joy. It ain't based on my performance. I just got to get in his presence. That, would, that, that, that woman said, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, I'll be made whole. I just got to touch him. I don't have to talk to him. He don't have to lay hands on me. You don't, they don't have to, I don't have to go out and everybody go, whoo, and I don't have to get the CD. I just, I just touch his, I just touch his, the hem of his garment. I, thought, I just, I'll be healed. I'm telling you, 
It's good to be honest with God. He knows it anyways. When you stand, you know, sometimes you're standing here and Kevin says, lift your hands, and you're going, if I, I'll feel like a hypocrite. Now, see, you know, you're, you're on, the, the untrained soul is your biggest enemy. Because he'll sit there and say, but you did, this week was the week from hell. Probably was. We've all had them. That's, that's why much the more I'm going to the house of God. David said, I was glad when they said, let us go to the house of the Lord. And we know David messed up. But you know what I love about God? He's looking at 90% of all the things that's going on in your life that this, is, this blesses his heart. Not just the potential that's there, the things you've actually done, the, even the things that you've thought about even though you've never voiced them. Lord, I wish I could do more for you. Lord, I, you know, I, I, my, my arthritis is kicking pretty bad today, and th I just want to go back in bed. I'm hurting, but you know, I don't think I'm going to make a batch of, batch of cookies for so-and-so because they need them. And there's a voice saying, yeah, but you could just you know, take a pill and go lay down. That'd, that'd be okay, and it would be okay. But you know, I want to tell you something about sacrifice. There's people that give have never given in sacrifice. Only when it's sacrificial, it touches the heart of God. Only power is released when it's sacrificial. There were guys dropping bags of gold off, and Jesus went, yeah. And some woman walked up there and gave her all that she had. There was nothing in the bank after that. That's all she had. And Jesus went, my Lord. There's the biggest offering all day. And the disciples went, what? It's a couple pennies. He said, but look what. That's all she had, the sacrifice. She gave it all. When that woman busted that alabaster box, she got persecuted for doing something that was needful. She was preparing Jesus for his burial. He hadn't even died yet. She, and he said, I'm going to remember this, and it's mentioned in every gospel. It's the only thing in all four gospels that has the same story. If you notice, you read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, there's different things talked about, whatever. But in that one, every, every, every book, it's a memorial. Be honest with them. Be honest with them. I have stood up here during worship waiting to come up here to preach and feel nothing. Feel about anointed as a, I don't know what, non-anointed person. <laughs> I was looking for something witty and cool to say, but nothing came. Just... Just empty. See, that's, that's that honesty I'm talking about. And just going, I don't feel anything. I, I'm not even sure this is the word. That, you know, I don't have the witness. I don't have that. Yeah. Shaka. This is the word from the Lord. But I'm being obedient. I've come up here with. See, I have notes today. But I've come up here, folks. Unbeknownst to you. I've come up here with blank paper. And not and right there saying, Lord, I'd appreciate a word. Now, I want to tell you something. I've walked with Jesus a lot of years. There's a lot of word in me. And I could get up here and just start spattling off stuff. And, but, you know, I'm not, I don't want to do that. I want a word in season. I want what you've, what you've gone through. I want you to walk, sit there and go, man, is he like a fly in our refrigerator? Because he's talking. It seems like everything he's talking about applies to me. I want that word. I don't just want a series. I don't go to sermons.com and get cool things. I don't do that. There's people that do that. But I want a word in season for you. And I've sat there going, okay, anytime now. It was right about, yeah, okay, it's, worship's over. Okay, just I hope you're paying attention. <laughs> Your presence is here. I feel it. Walk up here and boom, it hits you. I still don't have nothing on paper, but it just hits you. See, that takes trust. That takes honesty. We don't want to move an assumption. I've actually come up here and, and, and actually have said, I don't have anything. One time I asked, did y'all pray for me this week? Show of hands if you prayed for me. Three hands went up. I was like, well, that's okay. That's why I don't have anything. 
How many of you know, you're in this with me? Do you know you have a responsibility to pray for those in authority? Right. Am I an authority in this house? Yes. So you have a commandment by God to pray for me. Well, you've been, you've been walking with Jesus. You know, you, know, you know this stuff. I didn't say, well, if, they, if they're seasoned or whatever, then you don't have to pray for them. I mean, much the more. I mean, Jimmy Swagger, years ago when he messed up, and thank God God's a God of restoration, one of the things he said was, you know, the God has shown me through this whole thing that I always ask, I always ask for prayer for the meetings. I always, this is his own words. He said, I, I would tell people, pray for the meetings. Pray for the, you know, camp meetings and all this stuff. I never ask for prayer for myself. See, if you, don't, if you don't cover us in prayer, I wonder if David's intercessors were sleeping the night he was up there on the roof. They're on the battlefield. <laughs> but how many other people, some of y'all's ministry is to pray you're an intercessor. God calls you in the middle of the night to pray for different people and stuff. I ask people, my close friends, when every time I go on a vacation or on a trip, it seems like... I ain't making this up. It seems like Murphy shows up and tries to get Bryn and I in strife when we're about to go and celebrate our love. We end up fighting as we're going to get away and spend time with each other. And when that happens, we, the first day or so can be like, yeah, that's really pretty. <laughs> yeah, it's really, I like that mountain. That's, yeah. You know, that's how Satan works. This last trip when we were going to Hawaii, I asked, for, I asked specific people, I said, y'all pray for us this week so that when we get prepared to get on that plane, we're not getting on it in strife. And God bless whoever prayed because we got on that plane. It was yippee skippy, here we go. It was wonderful. Even though certain things on the trip got canceled, we were fine. We had a great time. We need prayer. You know, there's some, there's some little old ladies one day going to stand before God. Of course, when they stand before God, they won't be little old ladies. They'll be back to the, you know. I mean, you know, when, when you get to heaven, you're going to be in your prime. So if your grandpa or grandma went to, died and went to be with the Lord, you know, when I look to see Al in heaven, he'll be, I see, I seen this picture, I seen this picture of him in the army one time. He's like, dang, you look good. And uh, hallelujah, we'll leave it at that. But uh, that's who I'm looking for. I'm not going to look for this frail man that I saw the other day. We won't have glasses on. We won't, be, we won't have prosthetics. We won't have any of these. We'll be whole, people. Hallelujah. Well, listen to this. These people that prayed for Billy Graham's meetings, guess what? They might never led one person to the Lord. <clears throat> but they prayed for Billy. Faithfully. On their knees. In the night time. And when the Lord says, oh, here you go, here's your crown. And they're going to go, whoa! It's beautiful. It looks like Billy's. <laughs> yeah, it's because you co-labored with him through prayer. Some of y'all, is that scriptural? Yes. You know God knows some of y'all are shy. Y'all wouldn't believe this, but I am too. It's true. When I go out and do weddings or do, do different kind of venues or whatever, I'm speak when I'm preaching, I'm bold as a lion. But you get me outside this 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 setting. Bigger crowds, in fact I I'm the guy standing by the wall over there. So he'll tell you that's the truth. One on one. And when I'm when I'm in charge or doing this thing, and the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord's on me, I'm bold as a lion. I've said things in denominational churches that I'm surprised they let me finish the sermon. And I had people say, "Boy, that ain't never been said in this house, but it's been needed to be said for decades." I don't mind being bold when. Because that's who I am and when it comes to the things of God. But outside, don't assume, well, 
Brother Mike, you, you're bold as a lion. Well, yeah, and, and when God, when that's on us, you know, Samson was only strong when the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. He wasn't working out in the gym. Yeah, it's going, yeah, Samson here. Yeah, I was benching a couple of chariots the other day. No, it said the Spirit of the Lord came upon him, and he ripped off the gates. Spirit of the Lord came upon him, and he caught 300 foxes. You ever caught one fox? He caught 300. I mean, you've got to have some moves to catch 300 foxes. Yeah. And then light their tails on fire. Woohoo! Fox tail. <laughs> all right. Spirit of the Lord. We, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That's it. All right. So he healed all, healing all who were oppressed of the devil, for God was with them. Is God with you? Yes, he is. See, you don't get that past. Well, that was Jesus. That's the Son of God. Well, who are you? Sinner saved by grace. Well, with that mentality, you won't do a whole lot for Jesus. But the day you start saying, I'm a daughter of the Most High. I'm a son of God. I didn't say I was the son of God. I said, I'm a son of God. And you have to know your placement in Christ. You have to know who you are in Christ. Roman numeral three. That means we're almost done. Yep. In Romans chapter 14, verse 17 to 18, Paul's writing a letter. And he's talking about people that don't eat meat or things offered to sacrifices or what, you know, what, idols or whatever stuff. It was a kind of a regulation kind of thing. And he said, look, the kingdom, he said, for the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking. I mean, it's more about, you ever be around those Christians? You know, that dress is way too short, you know. And you've got way too many earrings. And that thing in your nose is an abomination. I mean, they're, they're, they're the Holy Ghost police. There's no such thing. They're religious people that find fault. Mark chapter 7, it says, the disciples went through the field and picked some corn and began to eat it. And it says, and the Pharisees found fault. Pharisees always find fault. If you think your ministry is to find fault, I'm telling you, you're a Pharisee. And if you're a Pharisee, you should go look at all the scriptures that apply to Pharisees, and you'll want to not be one pretty quick. The kingdom, of, the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. God is looking for people that understand that your righteousness is not based on your performance or your behavior. It's based on the blood of Jesus and his sacrifice. We're righteous because of him. Now, that righteousness will affect your behavior. And have peace. I mean, on this last days, if you have peace, you won't have to witness. People will come to you. Isaiah 60 says, Arise and shine, your light has come. The glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. Are we living in that time? It says, But look at, look at all those that gather themselves together. They come to you. They're coming to you. I'm telling you, in this harvest, you just got to have a sharp sickle. And I had a vision last night. I was laying in bed, and the Lord said, tell them to sharpen their sickles, because if you have a dull sickle, you tend to beat. You're not cutting the wheat. You're beating it and breaking it till it falls. And you're losing stuff in the process. You know, I had a surgeon a couple weeks ago do some, remove some extra skin over my eyelids. And I was so glad he didn't have a butter knife. Hang on there, buddy. Oh, man. He used a scalpel. It was numb, but I was awake, folks. You've got to have a sharp sickle. It's not enough just to be in the harvest. You've got you to be ready to be in the harvest. What does sharp sickle mean? Sharp discernment. You know, there's some people that aren't, they're not ready to be harvested. If you're trying to cut things that aren't ready to be cut, you're wasting your time. That's one of the things you've got to be really sharp in these last days. I've been work, talking with Brent. We've been working together on some, 
you know, who we're supposed to be helping and who we're not. I don't want to spend a moment working with somebody that I ain't supposed to be working with. And, and trying to convince somebody that's not there yet. I'm looking for the one that's going, Hey, I've been there. Harvest me. I'm not pulling on an apple that, Oh, no, yes, you are. And it's like, no, I'm not. When there's 15 apples laying on the ground going, You know, if you, somebody don't pick me up pretty soon, I'm going to rot away right here in the ground. I'll be worth nothing. Let's look for the ones that are already fallen. Let's look for the ones that are already broken. They, they have no fight. You pick up an apple on the ground, yeah, but it's got bruises. Well, didn't you have bruises? Sometimes we're just looking at that, we're judging by our eyes. We're looking for that perfect apple. You know, God will make that one on the ground perfect. You only want, but you know, look for the one who's already surrendered. That's praying, God, if you love me, God, if, if you still want me, sins. I, I pray, there are people praying that prayer. I'll never forget one time I was in Mississippi when I was a young man. I'm walking through the mall. I got long hair, so I'm looking for long hairs to witness to. See, I'm judging by the eyes. I'm looking for somebody I relate with. He's cool. And I'm going, giving him, you know, these Jesus papers we used to pass out and stuff. And the guy, oh, thanks, man, and walk away. And one time I'm, I see this guy, and I go, yeah, I'm going to go witness to him. And there was a guy in the mall that was, a, he was mopping floors. He was a janitor. And the Lord said, go, go talk to him. I'm like, I don't know that guy. Hello, you're witnessing. <laughs> now I'm going to go talk to this guy. And I remember, th this, is, this is so cool. I remember looking at this guy, that this guy I was going to go talk to, but my feet went this way. I'm looking, my, aren't you glad we can be led by the Spirit? Amen. And God in his grace said, like, Mike, you're just not getting it. And next thing I knew, I, I was standing in front of this guy with a mop bucket. And it's like, how'd that happen? <laughs> I said, how you doing, buddy? He goes, I've been doing better. I said, you got a lunch break coming up? You want to go? The Lord said, go buy him lunch. So we went over to Orange Julius. Anybody remember those? Got, a, got one of the orange Julius drinks, and I bought the guy a hamburger. And you know what? As, as I prayed over the food, um, he started crying. He said, it was a black man. He said, I, I told the Lord this morning, if he still loved me, send somebody to me and let me know he still loved me. Now I'm crying. And he, guess what? He got saved real quick. He was the easiest guy ever led to the Lord. You know why? Because he was ready. See, that's, that's a sharp sickle. Even though your body and your souls can be as dull as a... <laughs> you know, in the book, I, I think it's Amos, it says, if the axe be dull, it says more blows. It takes more blows to, to cut, you know. If you're, if you're chop, chopping down a tree with a dull axe, you've got a lot of work coming up. But if it's sharp, not that many blows, then that sucker will be down. So, man, the Lord's so good. Did y'all just feel that little wave right there? Because my eyes are getting kind of watery in it. He just put me in remembrance of, and it's been lots of times since then, but just be, have ears to hear right now. Who's ready? I don't care if you have history and you know these people and you've got already time invested. It's the, it's, if it's not now, it's not now. Let's keep reading. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. For he who serves Christ in these things is acceptable to God and approved by men. And that's the message about being approved. The world's looking for people that understand, the, understand that they're righteous in Christ. We're looking for people that know who they are in Christ. They're looking for people that have peace, and we're looking for people that have joy. You know why you got to have joy? It's your strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. You're that guy that's got a little, it's not walking around, oh, i tell you what, I'm just so depressed. You're not drawing anybody. You're the guy that's got a little spring in his step out there. And people going, do you not know we're in a pandemic? Do you not know this is going on? Do you not know that, yeah? Well, it looks like it's having no effect on you. Well, I'm not of this kingdom. That's right. That's right. We're not of this kingdom. Our king has got everything under control. 
Can I give you two more verses and then we can all shout and do a little? <laughs> Please turn your mic off. Thank you. I forgot to do that one time. Blew my nose and there I blew out the church. <laughs> that was a fairly quiet little thing. All right. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 17 through 19. Paul's writing to the, the Corinthians. And he says, um, he's talking about when you assemble and stuff. He says, I do not praise you. You know, when if I get up here and say, I have a word for you guys today, and God's really mad at you. I mean, that's not... Some of y'all, I feel led to go home. <laughs> I'm going to watch the nursery. I'm going to go relieve the nursery worker. It says, I do not praise you since, you since you've come together, not for the better, but for the worse. I hear that there is divisions among you, and in part, I believe it. Why? For there must be also factions among you. That those who are approved may be recognized among you. Now, I've, I've pastored in Ramona for 35 years. I've been to two splits. And I'm going to tell you what that, that's why that scripture has life to me. I've sat out there and seen people that were factions. There was division. They were planning my demise. They were meeting quietly, house to house. Yeah, it is terrible. But you know what? There were people that sat out there and didn't fall for it. There's people that came up and said, we're having a special meeting over at so-and-so's house. You want to come? What's it about? It's about Pastor Rock. I try to get him out of there. No, I ain't going. I have no part of it. See, these people always come disguised as being more spiritual, being more discerning. It's a high thing. They, all this kind of stuff. But see, I want to say this about my brother Al. He didn't fall for it. He was approved. Dave, you didn't fall for it. Miss Brenda, we didn't fall for it. Some of y'all haven't fallen for it. Now I realize God has led some of y'all out of churches you were in because mainly because you were growing and wanting to know more truth. You didn't leave because you're just mad at everybody. You left because maybe they were telling you it wasn't for today and you kept reading in the Bible where it says it is for today. You know, the Bible tells you to leave those churches. Having a form of godliness but denying the power from such turn away. That's scriptural to leave when it's, you're being told God's power don't work like that anymore. But some of y'all have sat in meetings where there was divisions going on. There was private things. There was whispering in the night. And see, there ha Paul says this, there has to be these things at times. Because it approves the ones that are easily led away versus the ones that are steadfast. One of the things I can say about my brother Al, man, he was, he was a covenant friend. Now, I've, told, I've given you an example of what a covenant friend is, and most of us, if you get a few of these in life, you're blessed. A covenant friend is a guy who has a key, and he enters into a room, and you're in that room. And then you lock your door, and then you take your key, and it says covenant friendship. You deposit your, a key in that little slit, and you hear... You don't know where it went, but you have no more access to it. Now you're in a covenant. Now you're stuck in the room with this guy. Now if he's doing great and he's on fire for the Lord and everything's peachy, it's good to be your brother. But what happens if he stumbles? What happens if he gets sick? What happens if his faith gets tried? What happens? That's why you don't have a lot of these people. You, you have friendships. You have different kinds. But I'm talking about covenant friends. And I'm going to tell you something. I was in my office Saturday. No, it was this morning. <laughs> Brenda was down here cleaning the church. I'm out here this morning. I, 
And I wrote on my calendar, Saturday, I wrote, Al went to heaven. And I wrote that, and it didn't affect me. And I wrote the word covenant friend. I lost it. I actually prayed that God would help me keep it together because I knew I had to talk about some of this. But covenant friends are valuable. You don't get many of those in life. You don't. There's people that say, I'm with you to the end. I'm behind you, Brother Mike. I've had some people say that, and then they're so far behind me, I can't see them. I don't want that kind of behind me. And I've had people stand behind me only to shoot arrows at me. I've been through this a couple times now. And I want to tell you something. This happens everywhere. We're not unique to this. Because Satan, you don't think Satan tries to get in the church and tries to cause divisions? Religious people crucified Jesus. They can be some of the worst. Paul said, I've been in perils of my own countrymen. I've been in perils in the city and perils in the country and perils of false brethren. You know, false brethren are the toughest because you think they're your brother. So you don't have your shield of faith up around them because you believe they're your brother. And the next thing you know, whoosh, whoosh, they're, they're shooting arrows at you. Well, my buddy Al was a covenant friend. Now he's in heaven, and there's a, there's a, a loss in my life because 27 years I've known that man. I hope you get covenant friends. Now, here's the thing. You want covenant friends, you've got to be one. It's not, that they, it's not that you deposit your key and they have a little key chain and they go, whoop. <laughs> you went through the motions of saying that you're, in this co you're committed to this thing, but you never let go of the key. So when, things, when my life had trials or I went through some storms or some things happened, you 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 pulled that key and you unlocked that door and you ran. Aren't you? The Bible says we Jesus. We have a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. That's Jesus. You know he's never he's never looked for that key. We've we've broke out of the door and we've ran the other way, but he never he he said I'll never leave you nor forsake you. For there must also be factions. People, we're living in a time right now the church is as divided today as it's ever been. There's people turning on one another and there's different things going on and stuff. What's going on in the world is going on in the church right now. But here I want to end on a really cool note. I'm going to turn and read this to you. In the last book of the Bible, Malachi. Malachi chapter 3. Verse 13 says, Your words have been harsh against me, says the Lord. Yet you say, What have we spoken against you? You have said, It's useless to serve God. What profit is, is it that we have kept his ordinances? That we have walked respectfully or mournfully before the Lord of hosts? Now we call the proud blessed. And there's people right now, folks, on your TV screen every day that are just as arrogant as the day is long and proud about their sin. For those who do wickedness are raised up. Even that tempt God, go free. This looks like they're just getting away with it. Listen to this, verse 16, saints. Then those who feared the Lord spoke one to another. You know, I, my friends, we talk about Jesus all the time. We don't just talk about him on Sunday. We talk about Jesus all the time. Spoke one to another, and the Lord listened and heard them. So a book of remembrance was written before him. This is not the Lamb's book of life, people. This is a special book that God has in heaven. And if your name's in there, Yeehaw. Those that feared the Lord spoke one to another, 
the Lord heard them. And so a book of remembrance was written before him for those who feared the Lord. This book's written for you and me. Who, who meditated on him. Who just thought about the Lord. Even when you don't put it to words, you just think about him. I was coming down the road, down 12th Street, or 11th Street this morning, and I was just thanking God that they repaved that road. And it's smooth. Little things. I mean, I, I'm telling you, I thank God for all kinds of stuff. It says, verse 17, that meditate on his name. They shall be mine, says the Lord of hosts, on that day that I make them my jewels. Do you realize you, you can be a special treasure to God? A special treasure to God? My wife has a jewelry box and she keeps her special treasures in there. She just don't leave them laying around the house. Where's that diamond ring you got me? Oh, I don't know. Oh, I hear something grinding in the, in the garbage disposal. Well, I hope that's a spoon and not your ring. <laughs> but see, don't we put special things in special places? And God's, listen to this, God's making a distinction. For you that think God's a communist and we all go to heaven, it's all, look like all... It's track houses. They all look the same. Everything's, you know, God's not a socialist. He's not a communist. It's, we're going to be rewarded according to what we've done, did or did not do. And here, he's got a special book that he, he writes people's names in there that think about them, just meditate on them. God, I, the news is very vexing. There's a lot of things that's going on that's really hard. But God, you're, you're so good. I watched that show of these reckless most dangerous and I'm looking at the poverty that people are living in and I it, I can't watch something like that and not respond to God listen it says they'll, they'll be mine says the Lord of hosts in that day when I make up my jewels and I will spare them as a man spares his own sons who serves him then you shall then you shall des, uh, again discern between the righteous and the wicked Listen to this, between those who serve God and the ones that do not serve him. It's a no-brainer, wicked, righteous. It's pretty easy to see that. But then in the, in the body of Christ, you have those that serve him and those that don't. You know, there's people going to heaven, but they haven't done anything. Some of them just prayed the sinner's prayer in the hospital, and they got born again minutes before they flatlined. Now, do you think that guy... He's got treasures and treasures and stuff laid up from heaven when he lives selfishly for, his, for himself all his life. But because he accepted Jesus, he has, he's, gets, he's, God, God would not be a just God if he did that. You know, being a, being a Christian sometimes is difficult. In an ungodly world, in a, when you're a light and everything around you is dark, how many of you, know, you stand out? It's not like we're trying to, but in darkness, light stands out. I was at Matt's house yesterday for a wedding, and they had these little bitty lights on this tree, and you could barely see them in the daytime. They weren't bright lights. They were little twinkle lights. But you know, when I went back down there, it was an outside thing. We went up and had food at the house. But going back to the car, now it's dark. And you know what? Those little bitty lights sure did, sure did stand out in the darkness. People, it don't take much light to stand out in darkness. You don't have to do a big, you know, one of those things that they have at grand openings or whatever. You don't have to be a, one of those things. You just have to be a light. And you're only, requir you're only required by God to give the light that you have. You can't give what you don't have. But whatever revelation and truth you have, give it to somebody. Because I'm going to tell you something. If you, get, if you get your name in that book, I said, if you get your name in that book, some of y'all are going, I just, if I get to heaven, I'll be happy. You say that, but come January, we're going to play a video that you're going to think, well, maybe I should try a little harder. <laughs> it, it, yeah, we are. It's, it's always a good thing to start at the beginning of the year as people are making their, my to-do list and my, my, but see, I want to tell you something. There's the Lamb's Book of Life, and you better have your name in that or you ain't, you ain't going to heaven. The Bible says the books were open and they were judged out of the books. 
I bet this is one of those books. I believe there are 66 books in here that we're going to be judged out of. But I believe there's some other books. You have the opportunity. I hope today you're getting salt in your mouth. Man. Can I possibly get in that book? It ain't possible. You have the choice whether you can be in it or not. It says these are those. It didn't say they raised the dead and, and all kinds of stuff. It just says they, they spoke to one another and meditated and thought about the Lord. You know how many times that you've seen things happen that were unjust and unfair and you said a little prayer into your breath? Lord, be merciful to that person. I saw somebody having a hard time the other day and I just said, Lord, help that lady. She's Actually, she was in the car, and she was yelling and screaming. I don't know who. And I just saw her in the rearview mirror, and I just said, Lord, be merciful to her. Help her, Jesus. See, those little prayers that aren't even said out loud or publicly, he's writing it down. He's going, I love that you think about me a lot. A lot. Tracy spent the whole day walking down the beach the other day talking to Jesus. Folks, it's just little things. Quit comparing yourself to other people. Those that compare themselves by themselves are not wise. Danny, I miss Brenda so. Oh, you know, she better be. She's been married to me for 30 years. <laughs> if, she's not, if she's not spiritual, I'm, I'm failing as a husband. And I'm not being facetious. Because as a husband, I'm, I'm commanded by God to cover her and teach her what God's taught me, because we're one. That's right. That's right. So she better be reflecting, because I'm reflecting what he's, it goes this way, okay? And she does, says she's an awesome woman of God. But don't compare yourself to other people, compare yourself to him. And see, people go, well, that's even worse. <laughs> no, he, listen to this statement. You only have to walk in the light that you have. She's walked with Jesus 30 years. Or, no, 40 something years. I think she's a year younger than me in the Lord. But I th yeah, I'm way older than you. I married a young one, boy, so might take care of me in my old age. <laughs> well, you don't look that old. God bless you. But see, you only got to walk in the light that you have. And if you walk in the light that you have and you give that light to people, the light that you have, the love that you have, then God will give you more. You better have something that after all these years or you're, you're not doing something right. There's, a, there's people in this, room, in this room that just got in this race a couple years ago. They're just, they're just getting after it. And some of you are going, I feel like I've wasted so much time. Well, yeah, you probably have. Ask Jesus to forgive you and forget about it and just get after it. Just get after it. Don't, woulda, coulda, shoulda, woulda, coulda, shoulda. You didn't ask God to forgive you, and now say, I'm in it. I'm in it to win it right now, Jesus. Can't, can't go back. Wish I had to follow Jesus in my youth. Well, he wish you had too. Because sure enough, he knocked in your youth. You just didn't answer. And he knocked in your 20s, and he knocked in your 30s, and he knocked in your 40s. Whenever you open the door, that's when he came in, and it's been awesome. But don't, you know, Get that under the blood and keep going forward. Don't be looking back. A man put his hands to plow and looks back is not fit for the kingdom. Focus. Amen? And just know this. Just thinking about him. Just thinking about him. You could get your name in that book. What do you think they get? I have no idea. But I, don't want to, I know this about my Heavenly Father. He's a rewarder of those that seek him diligently. You know, we don't, we don't all fly. I'm shooting for the fly thing. <laughs> I watch Mandalorian. And that jet pack, I go, gosh, that's so cool. But I got, I got better than a jet pack coming. I get to just fly. <laughs> you think you're going to get to fly? Oh, yeah. Y'all ain't ever had fly dreams? I have them all the time. Jesus flew. Then it said, he as he stood there, he ascended into heaven. That's called flying. The Bible says, as, as he is, so are we in this world. 
I'm telling you, the best is yet to come. The best is yet to come if you just got to endure just a little bit longer. But you know what? If you get out there and start bringing in the harvest and getting people saved and loving on people, they're going to be so thankful that you've, done, you've helped them. Wish you had more friends. Get a few saved, you will. You know, I led out to the Lord, and man, I never could shake him after that. <laughs> he came to church one night because his daughter was in a skit we were doing. He came to watch her. He didn't come to get saved. He came to church just to, just to see his daughter perform in a skit. But you know what? He got saved that, that, that evening. And he's been, ever since then, he's been... You want a friend? Lead somebody to Jesus. Some of you go, well, that makes it a little more selective. No. <laughs> no, you just, you, you, you lead them to Jesus, he'll work it out. Amen? Yeah. Are you encouraged today? Yeah. Well, I hope you are, because I was, I was encouraged when I got this message. I was encouraged sharing it. And just, just say to yourself on the way home, I'm going for the treasure book. I want to be a jewel. I just want to be a sinner saved by grace. Raise the bar. You could be a, one of God's treasures. It's your choice. It didn't say he, that he picked certain ones. The choice is on you. I told you how to get it. Now do it. Turn to somebody and say, man, I want to be a treasure. All right. Go and send no more. <laughs>